Hi, my name is Jeff and I'm the OT dude. I'm a licensed occupational therapist practicing in America. And in this video, I'm gonna be talking about balance grades that I often most encounter this when I'm doing an evaluation and I need to basically grade the patient's balance, both for static and dynamic, just to get a good baseline. And by the way, PTs also do this, but it's nice to be able to do this as an OT because for example, you may be the first to evaluate the patient and they just get this in the chart. It's also a good idea to know your patient's balance. So there are two types of balance most generally for your patients that you are grading and that's static versus dynamic. The way that I think about static is basically they're not moving. Dynamic is basically anything else that involves more movement out of like a stationary position. So a static balance may be, for example, just standing there to brush your teeth. It just uses your fine motor skills. You're not really moving a lot. Dynamic may be, for example, after you wash your hands and you're reaching for a towel and it's farther away. And I'll be referencing the chart that is found on otdo.com, the reference guide for balance. So basically the language is pretty much the same in terms of like the level of assist. So like min, mod, max, all those things are the same for static and dynamic. Really the only differences between the two is just kind of like the language and how it's defined for especially the normal. So for example, for static normal balance, it's able to maintain steady balance. In contrast for dynamic normal balance, it accepts maximal challenges and can shift weight out of one's base of support. But in terms of all the other grades like good, fair, poor, zero, they're very similar for static and dynamic. So I wouldn't worry too much about that. And I'm just gonna talk really in general with that in mind, I'm not gonna reference dynamic or static. So this will apply to both so that I won't have to talk about this twice. So normal is pretty intuitive. They have like the highest level of balance that you can imagine. So they don't need any external support like assistive devices or any physical support like from a helper like an occupational therapist. Next is good plus. So good plus, they maintain their balance with basically maximal challenge pre imposed on them and they do not use any external support. So you can actually group these good terms in terms of like for good plus, good and good minus, they all require no external support. So that's good. So what's the difference between good plus, good and good minus? Basically it's max mod min. That's the easiest way to remember that. Plus is max, like max, like, you know, like plus something, like, I don't know, in like those brands these days, they have like, I don't know, oh, Disney plus, right? It's the maximum amount of Disney content that you can consume. Good is basically one less than that, so moderate and good minus is minimal challenge. So what I'm talking about is a challenge imposed. So with my friend Mister here, I'm gonna do uh, sitting balance. So with good plus, they can maintain their balance. I'm gonna do static balance because Mister isn't really like live and animated, but what I'd be able to do for good plus is I can like push them like with a max level. Of course, I'm gonna go like super, super hard, but max and they can maintain it and not fall over. So then that also applies for sitting too. Like you can also do it in sitting and or standing. Like when I do my evaluations, I start off in sitting and then I go into standing. Mod is pretty self-explanatory for the good. And then good minus is like a min, kind of like nudging them. They're not gonna fall over. So how would you grade the patient? Basically, this is very similar to how you grade MMT, right? So when you exert a force on them, you exert like a min, mod, max challenge. It's exactly the same kind of concept, except instead of like you're measuring their strength, you're looking to see if they like lose their balance. So they may kind of like fall over or they may need to have like a protective response, reach for something, or they just flat out like fall over. So like sitting down, like they like fall over in the bed or something. If I apply a moderate challenge, so that's good, and they fall over, I'm exerting moderate force, then they may be a good minus. So that means you have to do multiple tests. So now I'm gonna exert a minimal challenge for good minus to see if they are at least that much. So if I'm exerting a minimal, nudge on them and they maintain that balance, then they're a good minus. But then again, if I were to like double test it, I guess, 
just to be sure, I exert moderate force again and then they fall over, then they're basically a good minus. So basically to kind of find out exactly what the patient's balance level is, you kind of want to, if they're not normal, exert different amounts of forces against the patient. So min, mod, and max, and see exactly where they're at. And I know this is kind of subjective, but it's like your best guess. So the next lower level of balance is the fair. Fair plus, fair, and fair minus. Unfortunately for fair, it's a little bit more confusing because it's divided into, it splits off basically at fair minus in, in terms of not needing external support. So fair plus and fair, both patient require external support, but at least in the definition for fair minus, there is no external support. So an easy way to remember this for the external support thing is think of like a fair, like carnival, like a carnival fair and how like the rides have supports. So for example, like the Ferris wheel, the part that spins and rotates around, there's like a foundation and structural support to prop it up. So that's the external support part. So FAIR Plus and FAIR have the use of external support for the patient. However, FAIR Minus, there is no mention of the external support because it kind of breaks off into a different kind of definition at that point, which I'll go over later. So one way to remember that is FAIR Minus, think of the minus part being like negative, so no, so basically no FAIR. FAIR having supports like FAIR Plus and FAIR, therefore FAIR Minus, no FAIR, therefore no mention of the external supports. So how would that look like in real life? Well, basically fair means that the patient is using support. So if they're sitting down and doing like static balance, then they may be using their arm, <laughs> using their arm and holding on to the edge of bed or something or the bed rail. So what that would look like for say static balance off the edge of bed for the patient, they may be using external support like the bed here. Like so they may be reaching out and patients often do this a lot, right? To maintain their balances when their balance isn't as good. They're using the edge of the bed or if there was a bed rail here, they may be using the, holding onto the bed rails for support. So therefore, if you see the patient having to use something like their hands, like on the edge of bed or the bed rail, then that would qualify them for using the fair part. Now, if you see the patient doing this and you think that they may be better, then you would ask the patient to not hold on to something. So their hands may just be off to the side or like on their lap or something if they're doing static edge of bed balance and they shouldn't be using it. Like you shouldn't see their muscles contracted in terms of like co-contraction. What does that mean? Minimal challenge is similar to like the MMT analogy and how we kind of describe the good plus the good and good minus in terms of the max, min, mod. It's the same thing here. The only difference basically is that they're using support. So fair plus and the fair, they're using support. And then for fair plus, you're exerting minimal challenges for them. So they can tolerate basically holding onto something for the support and like a minimal nudge to maintain that balance. It's gonna be a little bit hard to kind of show this as an example because my patient can't hold himself up for her sitting balance even, is the dummy. So. For fair plus, what this will look like is they be support, so like the hand is using support and I'm using a minimal like nudge against them. And if they can tolerate that and not fall over, then they are a fair plus. However, if I am just doing a minimal nudge and they're still holding onto something and then they still like fall over or lose their balance, then they would just be a fair. So how would you test for a fair? So with support, so they're holding onto something and no challenges, so that means I'm not even touching the patient. And if they can maintain that, uh-oh, they wouldn't be a fair then because they can't even maintain a balance while holding on to something even without any kind of nudge from me, the occupational therapist. From fair and then going down to poor, they're all grouped in terms of the level of like assistance that the patient actually needs. So I think this patient may be kind of this lower balance score because they actually need my help to maintain like let's say for example, static sitting balance. So this dummy at this point can possibly be a fair minus or anything less than that. Well, we all know that this dummy doesn't have like muscles and stuff. So 
kind of a teaser. They're probably going to be a zero and unable to maintain balance position. They require total assist. Fair minus, poor plus, and poor. This is basically kind of the reverse in terms of like this level of assist. So it's you actually helping them, the patient, now to maintain their balance now. So from fair minus all the way down to zero, it's basically the level of assist that you provide the patient. So you don't have to, like, have to memorize anything per se from this. You just kind of group this into your head. So no fair, fair minus, you have to provide some support for the fair. So like to run a fundraiser or something or to get finances. So providing some financial support or physical support to get this carnival going. I don't know, this is a terrible metaphor. <laughs> so fair minus, minimal assist to maintain their position, poor plus, moderate assist, and then going off this pattern, poor is maximal assist and total assist is zero. Pretty self-explanatory. So I hope this video helped. I think definitely this, even memorizing this isn't easy because there's like the plus and then the regular score and then the minus. To be honest, sometimes even I kind of get them mixed up and I reference my own guy. So this is actually the reason why I made otdude.com from the very, very, very beginning. Like this was like one of the first things I created, which is like this table because like this information isn't easy to find on the internet. Just remember like what they are, like when you're testing the patient so that you're able to kind of clinically grade them and score them when you look at like the definition on the table. So hope this helps. And by the way, if you're new to my channel, my resources, my content, be sure to subscribe to my channel on YouTube and also to follow me on my newsletter. I regularly post occupational therapy content for students, practitioners, research-based stuff, all the good stuff. So thanks for watching and have a nice day.